Pastor Ole Tikuhude Ebuna, coming to you with the word. There is no need for speed in life without direction. For a life of permanent success, divine direction is a capital demand. You know, the word is, is direction. The, the, God's word is direction. Every of God's word is direction. Everything God says is direction. God's word is your way out of any trouble in life. God's word is your way into any kind of success in life. His word is also the destination it points to. It's also the destination it points at. That's one thing that is beautiful about it. It not only points, it is the destination. My son, forget not my word, right? But let your heart keep my words. Next verse. For length of days and the long life and the peace shall they add to the issues that the word of God will add to you what? Length of days. It doesn't mean it will lengthen your days, but you have more out of a given time, right? Glory to God. Time will no longer be a disadvantage unto you. You will accomplish more than you could ordinarily unaided by divine direction. Okay? The next verse. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. He's still dealing with the word. He says, bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of your heart. Very instructive. Now, how do you write the word on the table of your heart? By meditation and the confession. You write the word upon the table of your heart by meditation and the words confession. If you will learn to meditate on the word, if you will learn to confess the word, the word will be written upon the table of your heart. Meditation is a serious business. If you must practice divine direction. Okay? Now, next verse. Next verse. He says, so shall you find favor and a good understanding in the sight of God and man. Now, for those of you who stayed in the first service, one of the benefits of this second service, you will hear the things you didn't hear in the first service. Right? He says, so shall thou find favor and a good understanding in the sight of God and man. You know, some time ago, I went for a meeting. In Lagos, a church service. I was enjoying the service. All of a sudden, they said, Second, first service has ended. It's now time for. And those with me, the one thing I said, Go where? Until all the services end. Go where? I was not even a worker, I was a visitor. But I thought, How can the world uh, there be an opportunity for listening again? And someone is saying, I just came for first service. Said no, until the preacher is tired of preaching, I can't be tired of listening. <laughs> That's what I thought to myself. I said, if, if this man is not tired of preaching, if he's not tired of speaking, I can't be tired of listening. That has always been my attitude towards the word. Okay, so shall thou find favor and a good understanding in the sight of God and the man. That means you can find favor and a good understanding. In the sight of God and man. There are people who have found good a good favor and a good understanding in the sight of God, but not in the sight of man. They are righteous by faith towards God. But men still despise them. They still appear as worthless before men. And they've got to pay attention. Next verse. 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on to. Lean. You know what it means to lean? To find support in something. Uh, did you get what I said? To get support in something. It says, don't get supported by your own understanding. I try to find out a ground from the word of God for all my actions. That's why I don't walk in condemnation. If the word of God says a thing is alright, I don't care what the word is saying. So, my support system is the word. Are you following? So, he says, lean not unto thine own understanding. Do not practice your own understanding. Rather, practice the understanding of God's word. For instance, concerning you, you may have, you know, been seeing yourself for a very long time as worthless, ineffective, you see, foolish. Don't practice that understanding. Practice the understanding the word of God gives you concerning you. Lean upon that understanding. Find support upon that understanding. Are you following? Are you getting it? Find support upon that understanding. Very important. Glory to God. Okay. Now, we're going to read this verse in the NRT. There's something I'll love you to see. Okay. A, a message Bible. Sorry. Message Bible. Go to. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. Listen for God's voice. In how many things? Everything you do. Everywhere you go, He is the one who will keep you on track. Direction. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go. Hmm. Let me tell you. Listen. For myself, years ago, I was called to some ministers' meetings where they said they want to give us keys. They said that every, every city has its own key. And they were teaching. Imagine, they wanted to teach the kids to all the states in Nigeria. I said, no. I said to myself, God's word works everywhere, anywhere, anytime. Having known his word, my success is not geographically limited. I can succeed anywhere. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means if I could locate God's voice anywhere in this world, I'm a success. Are you following I don't need to know how to do business in a particular place. I don't need to know how things work there. If I could have access to God's voice in everything I do, everywhere I go, I am kept on track. Say amen. I've been where people called and said, can you tell us your opinion about this? I said, no. I'm going to give you God's opinion. The word of God has formed my opinion. Did you get it? His word is my opinion concerning whatever. He says, be not wise in your own eyes. Be not wise in your own eyes. Be not wise in your own eyes. You've made your calculations. You have weighed your facts. But, he says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. He says, and depart from evil. Glory to God. Glory to God. Verse 8, very beautiful. It shall be health to thy navel. Again, health. And marrow to thy bones. Praise the Lord. Okay, quickly go to Psalm 32. God's word is a pointer. It's a pointer to a glorious destiny. It's a pointer. It's a pointer. And in other words, 
Look up. His word is also the destination it points to. It's also the destination it points at. That's one thing that is beautiful about it. It's not only points, it is the destination. Imagine if your destination in life is the word. What could be more beautiful than that? Now, what could be more beautiful than that? If your destination is the word. Now, in the dark, there are persons that, w- that can you know, call for guidance. And while you are following them, you are still very careful and calculating because you don't trust them. When you go to a city, you just came into the city and then you are looking for direction and then someone says, this is my first time in the city but somehow, somehow I, I know where you are going to. Are you going to trust that person? No. But when you find someone who says, ah, I was born in this area. This is my 42nd year here. Huh? Ha <laughs> ha. I'm area, area, Namibia area here. It will be very easy to follow such a word. The word of God created your destiny. The word has been there. It's not just calling on you for a walk. If you know that the word has been there, brothers and sisters, how is the followership going to be? It's going to be joyful. If I know that the word has gone to where I'm going to, the word has seen my future very clear. Blessed. Now, um, go to verse number 8. Psalm 32. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. Look at God. He said, I will guide thee with my eyes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo! He says, God says, I will guide you with my eyes. What a privilege. What a privilege. What a privilege. The Bible says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. What a privilege. He says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way thou shalt go. There are people who have been instructed by experiences, huh? by stories that fly around. For me, I wait upon him for instruction. He says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which there is a way that I shall go. He says, he's the one that instructs and teach me, teaches me in that way. He says, I will guide you with my eyes. Next verse. He said, be ye not as the horse or as the moon. You know why? These ones, they are very difficult to control. Unless you bind their mouth, right? He says, this one speech have no understanding. Whose mouth must be held in with beat and bread of least they come near unto thee. He says, be pliable. Glory to God. Glory to God. Quickly, Isaiah 48. In divine direction is profit in life. In divine direction is profit in life. Isaiah 48. In divine direction. Is what? Profit. If you want to profit in life, be given to divine direction. Don't be wise in your own understanding. Don't say, I know how to do it. Be wise in his word, right? Okay. Verse 17. Verse 17. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teaches thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Now, did you see the word, the way that thou shouldest go? It didn't say the way thou would go. It didn't say the way thou might go. It says the way that thou, that means for each and every one of us, there is a way we are expected to go. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is a path we are expected to navigate through in life. Proverbs 22 says, Train up a child 
in the way he should go. Should. He didn't say train up a child in the way you want him to go. He says train up a child in the way he should. That means that way was predestined. It was prepared before the arrival of the child. He says, now train the child in. No, now he says to us that the Lord is the one who teaches us to profit. He leads us by the way that we should go. There is a way we should go. And when you are in that way, you can be rest assured that destiny is at work in you. You can be rest assured that destiny, that this thing I'm doing, huh, is actually landing me, you know, on a great future. Some people, they, they are not certain. They are not certain. Glory to God. You know that when you are designing, sometimes the process doesn't make sense. But if you have seen the end, of what you are designing. Even though others. To them it doesn't make sense. Huh? There is this hope. That brings the rest to you. Even in the process. You get? So there are certain things I do today. That obviously does not make sense to the senses. Are you getting what I'm saying? But because I have seen where it will land me. There is confidence. There is rest. Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's go back to Proverbs chapter 6. Chapter 6. We are talking divine words. Direction. Say divine direction. Thank you Lord Jesus. Oh, go to verse 20. My son, keep thy father's words, commandment, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Now, to us, we are dealing with the word. My son, keep thy father's commandments. And let me tell you why this is important. Look up. There is such a thing as divine destiny. We have talked about it several times. Right? There are three things you need to know about destiny. We've discussed natural destiny. Right? This has to do with um, some natural elements. For instance, where you were born is a function of natural destiny. The parent that gave birth to you is a function of natural destiny. The place where you were born is a function of natural destiny. The school you attended, the siblings. Are you getting what I'm saying? God didn't give you your siblings. All of those are a function of natural destiny. Are you following? There is also a satanic destiny. Yeah. Every human being that comes into this world, the devil has a plan for him or her. Yeah. The devil didn't create you, but he has a plan for you. The Bible says the thief cometh but for to steal, kill, and do what? What is he killing? What he didn't create? What is he destroying? What he didn't make? What is he stealing? What does not belong to him? But he has a plan. Are you following? His plan is to kill, steal, and destroy. But there is the divine destiny. He says, I am come. That they might do what? That they might have life. Your divine destiny begins the moment you are found in Christ. The moment you got born again. The moment you got born again. Now, there's a reason why we explain, because there is no divine destiny, divine direction in natural destiny. 
There is no divine direction in what? The Bible says, for as many as are led, for as many as are being divinely direct, directed. They are what? The sons of God. That means it will take sonship for you to be divinely directed. Are you following? So, the ones that can assess divine direction are the ones who are born of God's spirit. Is somebody following? Now, this is very important. Okay? Your divine destiny begins the moment you got born again. Now look up so that you get this. This is very important. Now go to First Corinthians. I think this is very important. Then we come back to this. First Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians 15. Can somebody say amen? amen. Glory to God. Okay. Go to verse 21. For since by man came death. By man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Divine destiny. Adam was a natural being. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was a natural being. Now, the destiny we had in Adam was a natural one. I just want you to see um, um, a few things from this chapter of scripture. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ, shall all be made alive. Okay? Now, quickly, go to verse um, verse 45. Verse 45. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Before 45, I just go to um, 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 where am I going to begin now? Go to 35. Let's see what time can allow. Before we, I just want to show you how divine destiny works, right? Okay. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Next verse. Thou fool, that with thou sowest is not weakened, except it die. And that with thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain. Next verse. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. You know why I'm reading this? Naturally, or normally, there are people who will just put, the Bible, the word of God is not for quotation. The word... 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 6 it says all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and it is profitable for what? For what? Doctrine. You know that? Now, that doctrine means explanation, teachings. One of the problems of so many ministers and ministries is that the Bible is reduced to quotable quotes. The Bible is not for quotation. He said, I want to quote a scripture. No, scriptures are not for quoting. They are for explanation. Scriptures explain the facts of life to us. Scriptures explain things to us. They are not for quotations. He said, I'm citing a reference. No, we are not citing a reference. We explain with the scriptures. That's by the way. Okay, just to show you why I'm reading so many things at the same time. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, and another flesh of beasts, and another of fishes, and another of birds. Next verse. There are also celestial bodies, and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another in star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. 44. It is sown in natural body. I want to see this. 
It is sown a natural body. There is a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. What does that mean? Okay. Then and then it says, and there is a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. Next verse. As so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul. Adam was made a living soul. He tells you. The last Adam, referring to Jesus, was made a quickening spirit, a life-giving spirit. Your divine destiny comes from this quickening spirit. It is in the resurrection of Christ that he became a quickening spirit. That's why 1 Corinthians 15, 45, he didn't call him the second Adam here. He calls him the last Adam because the last Adam points to the resurrected Lord. Did anybody get what I said? When he, before he died, he was the second Adam. In the resurrection, he is referred to as what? The last Adam. Your divine destiny. It is this last Adam. That the Bible refers to in 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ. It didn't say, therefore, if any man be in Jesus. Jesus, being in Jesus, will refer to being in the second Adam. Uh, is somebody getting this thing? So, being in Jesus will mean that you are in the man, the physical man that walked the streets of Gary. But Christ points to the resurrected Lord, the Lord of life. The life you have in the divine destiny comes from the Christ. So it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, it is said, therefore, if any man be in Jesus. Look up, church. Look up. Did anybody get what I said? Did you get it? Let me explain further. Jesus Christ. If you read the synoptic gospel, the first, you know, the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These books deal with the humanity of Jesus. Tells us the history of the man, the miracles. The supernatural wonders of God that took place in the life of the Son of God. The stories, the miracles, they are beautiful. But the stories, the miracles, the events could not give life. Jesus raised people back to life. But he didn't raise people in his at work. He didn't raise people back to spiritual life. He only raised them back to physical life. Are you following? Jesus healed the bodies of man. But he didn't heal the spirits of men. Are you following? So Lazarus died. Jesus went, brought him back to life. But the life he brought him back to was unto physical life. But when he died and he resurrected, he brought us out of spiritual death. Are you getting it? So we were risen with him in his resurrection unto newness of life. So it was in the resurrection that he became the Lord of life. That was why in John 20, 20, when he returned, the Bible says, he breathed upon them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. He never said this before then. But he said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Because he, 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 he returned as the Lord of life. Is somebody following so, we are not in Jesus. We are in the Christ. Now, Jesus today is seated in heaven. Bodily seated in heaven. He was raised back to life bodily. So, in his body, he ascended into heaven. But today, you and I are in the Christ. Listen, oh, Falamandos. In that Christ is the spirit of that Jesus and the church. That's what the Bible says. Now he is the head of the church. 
Oh, did anybody get this? Did anybody get this? We are in Christ, not in Jesus. Jesus, who is bodily seated in heaven, is also the Christ. <laughs> Let me not take this too far. Did anybody get what I said? Did anybody get what I said? Hmm. This is why Paul says the communion of the saints. He talks about the communion of the Holy Spirit. It is the communion of the Holy Spirit. Why? Why? Oh, thank you Lord Jesus. So that's where your divine destiny begins. So the Bible says, in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 16, it says, henceforth, we know no man after the flesh. How could Paul, who didn't have an earthly walk with Jesus, be saying, we know no man after the flesh? That means, he met people or he read letters written concerning his fleshly walk, right? Are you getting what I'm saying? That means he met people and read accounts of his earthly walk. Just like today when you read Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, it is knowing Jesus after the flesh. Did anybody get what I said? When he says, hence we know no man after the flesh, it's still a possibility today. There are people whose only knowledge of the Christ, only, the only thing they know about Jesus are the things they learn from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And there are churches, denominations that are built upon that. Hope you know that. It's a first reading, Matthew. Second reading, Mark. Third reading, Luke. Fourth reading, reading, John. Hope you know that. How do we know him outside the flesh? Remember, when he was, I just want to, you know, explain divine destiny to you. When he was with them, they saw him in his body. He could be weak. He could be strong. You understand? Now, at some point, in chapter 16 of John, he began to lead them, giving them insights into a different version of himself. He says to them, guys, I have yet many things to tell you. I have yet many things to show you. You've seen me go to Jerusalem and the time I'm in Jerusalem, I am not in Samaria. You've seen me walk up to this particular place and by the time I was there, people had to come to me there. If they will be healed, if they will, be, if they will listen to me. So he was saying to them, I have yet many things. There are other dimensions to this thing which you do not know. A time is going to come when they are not going to be looking for me in Jerusalem. When they are not going to go to Samaria and look for me. That time, I am the Christ and my presence is not limited to any location. Are you getting what I'm saying? That was what he was explaining to them when he said to them, I am with you. A little while, I'm not going to be with you. In a short while, I'm going to be with you. He was talking about dimensions of his existence. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, today, oh, thank you Lord. Can somebody say amen? amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? Then, if you would listen to Jesus, you go to Jerusalem. If you listen to Jesus, you did you did you read when at some point people had to cross a river through boats looking for him? Today you don't do that. Today you don't do that. That it was part of what he was telling them that day. He said, I have yet many things because they couldn't take it. Because those things are gonna be things of the spirit. The Bible says the natural man received not the things of the spirit. Because until they were born again, they couldn't receive the things of the Spirit. You could hear it, but receiving is a different thing. So he says to them, For the natural man received not the things of the Spirit. Because they are foolishness unto them. Now, look at this. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Had it been Jesus, you know, stood Peter up and the others and started telling them you know for we walk by faith and not by sight and again 
the love of God is shared abroad in your heart here. Peter, is, he will be listening and might be jotting, but he can't receive it. That was why, upon Jesus' arrest, during the time they came to arrest him, Peter took out his sword, cut off someone's ear. Jesus couldn't teach him that the life of God, you know, does not behave that way. Because Peter, not only does he not have it, then he couldn't understand it. So he says, guys, I know you have, you have been with a wonderful Lord. Huh? It is expedient for you that I go. This is not the best of it. Yeah. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good? But this is not the ultimate. He says, it is expedient for you that I go. Because if I do not go, the comfort of which is the Holy Ghost will not come. And by that spirit, you and I were baptized into Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying? Those were some of those things. If Jesus had told them, Peter, hmm, now, you are here. Let me even tell you something. Hope you know that the Peter, I know that some persons, if they hear this, they say, hey, because I read books on discipleship. Say, let us learn the followership of Jesus through the man Peter. Let us learn the followership of Jesus through the way John and some persons who made doctrines out of it. Let me tell you something. The John that wrote the epistle was not the John that followed Jesus. The John in the epistle was a new creature. If, unless you don't believe the testimony of the scripture. The Bible says, therefore, if any man is in Christ. So by the time John was writing the epistle, he was a new creature. He had been born again. The man that followed Jesus had died. This is the gospel truth. Else nothing makes sense. Did anybody get what I just said? Oh, me soprahata. Oh my God. One of these, we're going to deal on the new creature. I, I thought we've not preached the new creature as we ought to. But let's, let's, let's come back. So you have a, nat a natural destiny, right? Okay, you had. That's the better word. You had. Now you are in Christ. Say amen. amen. And now in Christ, he says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. God wants to lead you. God wants to guide you today. He not only created you, there is a divine destiny for you and he wants to lead you on in that path of destiny. That's what we're talking about. Okay, back to Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. Okay, my son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon your heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He said, bind the word continually upon your heart. Why are they talking the word, the word, the word, the word? He said, bind it continually upon your heart. Bind it. Bind the word. Bind the word. Bind the word. You had reasons to be bitter, but bind the word continually upon your heart. Yeah. Bind it. See, there are people who have genuinely a divine mandate. But they don't have a divine approach. They are just running in frustration. You look at the life. You know that God's hand is in this life. But there is no divine approach. This life is going to be running from frustration to frustration. It's a bind the word continually upon your heart. And tie them about thy neck. Did you get this? What do you do with neck? You look. You want to turn. It's about direction. It's about direction. I want to turn in a particular way. The word of God says no. No. Don't turn that way. <laughs> Did you get it? That means I'm now yoked. I want to go this way. The word said no. You know sometimes 
When some of us are calm, it's not that we don't know what to do. Sometimes the position of the word that time is become just like this. And the guy is looking at us as if he has won. You have not won. It's the word of God that is making us that way. <laughs> Amen. The guy stole from us and he says, ah, you know these pastors, they are mumu. You steal from them, they still be. Ah, we know, we know. The, the word of God didn't drain this thing. We know how to deal with you. We know how to handle you. We know how to handle you. You know, sometimes when I look at the word, I look at it, I say, God. Because sometimes, walking according to the word will appear as foolishness to people. You know that. You need to handle this person. You need to deal with this person. But we are restrained. The word says, don't repay evil for evil. He say, he says, vengeance belongs to the Lord. And you're like, I say, don't answer back. And they are saying what they are saying like this. And they think they've won. You know, it happened to me years back. Years back. At the, as the person is offending, I know I would forgive. I'm only planning on how to go on with my life. In order not to let that offense, you know, deter me from making progress. Yeah. But we know what to do. But the word has been tied about our neck. Amen. Amen. Next verse. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou goest, it says the word shall lead you. It says the word shall lead you. If I want to change city, I'm tired of Oka. Is it the word that is leading you or your emotions or the news you heard? Somebody say, hey, it's happening in Abuja. No, 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 no. Ah, Yenegua. Yenegua is ah, your, your friend. Secondary school friend called and said, what are you doing in Oka? Come to Yenegua. And then suddenly, you start browsing. Because that's your own search. The Bible says, for as many as are led. You know, you can sit down and say, God, what about Yenegua? You can. You can. And if you, will, if you know how to hear from him, he can tell you in details. You don't need to even Google. He can tell you how Yenegua is. Because that such facility is most dependable. It is your spirit. It's your spirit. So we are just going to Yenegua. Why? There is rice there. Enough rice. What are you going to do with rice? I, I want to be important rice. Okay. Do you know that you don't follow someone else's leading? <laughs> if God tells a man to do a thing, eh? Are you getting what I'm saying? Then you, you join in doing that thing. It doesn't necessarily mean you will get results. Know what God is asking you to do. That is where success and results in life comes from. God might have told the other guy, that your friend, to go to Yenegua because of rice. And upon arrival at Yenegua, he started dealing on rice. Success upon success. Things are moving. And you saw his picture on Facebook. The guy, man, I'm fresh. You know, that's what they say today. Fresh. Say, so stay there now. Then you, you start making plans to travel to Yenegua. Upon what God has said to your friend. Though. <laughs> God has not spoken. Upon what he has done what? Say to your own friend. How many of you know, if you are reading the Bible, you find some of the cities God asks some men to leave. He asks others to go to. <laughs> Did you get what I said? So, it's about his voice. It doesn't matter what is happening there. If, 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 if it's God that is leading you into that place, it doesn't matter who is leaving that place. At the time you enter there, it is for profit. Because you are there based on divine direction. Did anybody get what I said? God can ask you, I'm not being practical, God can ask you to enter into a business. And at the time you are entering, it's when not everybody is leaving that business. If you head them with precision going, you can't end up a fool following God. It's not possible. That's why you need to know the, you know, the importance of meditation and confession. I told you that, right? Okay. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. 
When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. What a word. Glory to God. He says, the word shall talk with me when I awake. Thank you, Lord. Verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp. He says, his word is a lamp. And the law is light. The reproofs of instruction are the way, the direction. Of life. How can I ever fail? No, how can I ever fail? Brothers and sisters, let this not be just some confessions you make. No. Commit to these things. Remember, Paul writing to Timothy, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. That thy profiting may appear unto all. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is very powerful. John chapter 12, before we close. Now, divine direction. Imagine divine destiny, divine direction, divine destination. Wow. I'm made for life. I'm made for life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The song says, He leadeth me. Oh, blessed thought. Now, if he's the one leading you, huh? you can even close your eyes. You will miss your way. He is the one leading you. The road may be crooked. May not be smooth. But if he's the one leading you, if he's the one leading you, oh, give us that Psalm 32 again. I want to read in the NLT. If he's the one leading you, Psalm 32. If he's the one leading you, thank you, Lord Jesus. Give us in the NLT version. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. Did you get this? The best what? The best pathway. Remember the children of Israel. By the time they were returning, let me give out. By the time they were returning from where? From Egypt. There was a shorter route. But they were led through a longer path. See Moses who? You know, all of those were Moses' judgments. Moses looked at these people and said, Ah, if this thing takes 40 days, eh? if you see war eh, on the road, you say, is it not just five days? You go back. On the fifth day, you would go back. But when you have journeyed for five years, on a journey, I didn't get what I said. I didn't say you... On a journey, you are, he said, I'm traveling. And he said, I'm in the 17th year. Eh? On the road. No temptation will make you go back, brothers. I said, no. <laughs> no temptation. Anyone that suggests that you fight the person. He said, nah, I will see the end of this thing. Then, but, but six months, you might still be complaining. Not when your first child, whom you gave birth to the year you left Egypt, is 35. And you are still on the road. You say, boy, I started the journey when I was pregnant with you. <laughs> pregnant with you. That was when I started this journey. Even that your son will not want to go back. In fact, his life is journey. Of course, you know now. He is a child of journey. <laughs> In Igbo, you name him Onyije. That's the name. You are not going to go back. He says, I will guide you. Out. There is a best pathway. That suffering way, frustration way, is not the best pathway. Years ago, one afternoon, I can't forget. I went into my room. I looked myself in the mirror and said, let God help you. 
It will be hard the other way around. Let him help you. Let him help you. He says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. There is a best pathway. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is a best pathway. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I will advise you and watch over you. He says, I will. Hey! When Moses died, hope you know the death of that, that man. Do you know that nobody knew he died? God had to announce it. Sometimes when I think about the death of Moses, nobody knew. All they knew was that Moses went up to the mountain. How did he go? God called him and said, come, come and die. <laughs> said, Moses is enough. Hmm? Come up and die. Imagine, God asked you to come up. Will you go up? So, eh, no, no. Eh, eh, hiya. Uh, I can't, this time, eh, I'm going to pitch my tent down here. God says to Moses, come up. Why? Moses did something. I just want to show you the difference between him and Joshua. Because later on, God began to speak to Joshua. He said, to him, this book of the Lord shall not depart. He was teaching him divine direction. Now, look up. So you see what happened to Moses. Moses knew certain things which he didn't do. For instance, when God asked him to speak to the rock, when the children of Israel was testing. Moses knew that that rock was beyond something physical. Because in second, in first Corinthians chapter 10, the Bible says that that rock was Christ. It doesn't mean that it was the person of Christ, but it was a revelation in a thing. So, Moses knew that. He knew that. And God says, Moses, as these people are thirsty, go speak. Before he asked him to speak, the first time they were thirsty, what they asked him? Say, go strike. What does striking mean? It's a sign of judgment. It's a sign of judgment. So, God was showing Moses that if the Bible says the rock was Christ, that Christ was going to be struck only once. The Bible says, affliction shall not arise the second time. So, oh, are you following? One day I'm going to use this to teach you the New Testament ministry. But I just wanted you to see something that happened. And Moses had done the first one. After the son has been judged, what do we do today? For us in our relationship with him, we confess him as Lord. That was what he was teaching. The second time, what you're going to do is to speak. Uh, we're going to deal with that next time. So, he now asked him, oh yeah, now, this time, don't strike. Speak to the rock. Moses in anger. Where only Moses knew what he did. The children of Israel, none of them knew the implication of that action. And Moses didn't tell anybody. Until we saw from the Spirit. In the epistles, it reveals to us what happened to him. Are you getting it? But you know, Moses must have known what happened to him. And then God says, oh, Come on, it's time for you to leave. Moses went, I can't tell whether God asked me to do like this, die like this, lie down. I don't, he, he, are you getting what I'm saying? Or God said, Oh, yeah, face your back, sit, place your hands on your chest, use your eyes to close, use your hand to close your eyes. All we know was that he died, and nobody knew. God had to come and announce that he has died. Because when they went up to that mountain, they couldn't see his body. And you know, some foolish guys who say, we know this guy. Pharaoh and others, they will come to take him back. This guy has brought us here for frustration. God came to Joshua and said, now my servant Moses is dead. He said, oh! God told him, read your Bible. Says my servant David is dead. Now you be strong. You are not going to take up the walk. But he says to him, turn not to the left, nor to the right. He says, the word of God should be your focus. He said, then thou shalt make your way prosperous. And thou shalt have a good success. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. Amen.
Glory to God. Say, I have a divine destiny. I have the divine direction. Then I have the divine destination. Glory to God. This message is brought to you by the Media Department of the Lord's Brethren Church International with headquarters in Oka, Anambra State, Nigeria.